everyone! I'm at TCAF today. I'm on the third floor at table 303, which is near the elevators. Um, so Bones will be there, I'm there, we're selling our Pretty Mouth books, uh, the Magpie Volume 1, and the Scourge of Nine Point. Um, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's really fun. It's going good. So come, come say hi if you're in the area or attending TCAF already. Also, yesterday we launched our Kickstarter. Uh, we're trying to print the Magpie Volume 2 with, we've got some really cool merch happening. Um, <laughs> we've got some really cool merch happening, like um, an exclusive cover for the book and some really sweet merch. <laughs> Heck, this is hard. <laughs> um, so if you like horror comics about a lesbian love triangle with an, an eldritch abomination, we got the book for you. Also, you can buy book one with the Kickstarter, so don't worry if you haven't read book one yet. The link is in the description below. So today for my my sweet, sweet video, I <laughs> I am working on Marble, the main character of Scourge of Nine Point. Um, he's a sweet uh, calico kitten, um, and I've designed him in the past. Uh, so like, this is just me trying to figure out how to draw him consistently and make sure that he looks the right age. Um, cause c character consistency and consistency in general is something that I really struggle with in my comics. Um, yeah, cause even though I've drawn Marble a million times already, I still have trouble making sure he looks on model. Um, so yeah. It's also really important, like, before you start drawing your comic to, like, really have your characters, like, have their designs down so that the designs don't change as you go through the comic. I mean, they're going to change inevitably as you, like, improve as an artist, but, like, you want them to, like, change as little as possible uh, so that they're not, like, unrecognizable. Yeah, um, right. So before you start your comic, you want that to really be nailed down. Because um, I know in my comics... As as um, time goes on, I tend to tend thing bleh, things tend to shift around on me. <laughs> um, I mean, part of it is like quality control. I probably need to like pay more attention to what I'm drawing. Um, but I find like uh, you know, characters will get taller and shorter randomly. Their hair will change lengths at random. Um, like, if you look at Trixie on the first page of the magpie, she, like, her hair is super short, and then, like, a day passes and it's super long. <laughs> like, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and it comes from me, like, not understanding the character and learning it as I draw them to, like, make their design more pleasing or cohesive as I go, instead of having it ready before I start drawing the actual comic pages. And, like, uh, background elements tend to shift around, like, furniture will slide around the room, like, couches will get longer and shorter. Um, it's, it's not good. I need to work on keeping that stuff not bad. <laughs> I've also noticed, like, um, in previous comics, I'll have random style changes, I guess? Like, maybe not so much in Magpie. In Pretty Mouth it was a problem. A big part of that was, like, I was a very new artist to comics and, like, I was really learning character design and art in general. So I remember at some point in Pretty Mouth, the <laughs> the characters suddenly get, like, different noses because I, I was told, like, oh, they all have the same face. Like, you need to do something about this. So I gave them different noses because I thought that would fix it <laughs> um, without realizing that there was, like, other things that make faces different, like face shape and consistent shape throughout the design. Um, but yeah, so if you're ever reading Pretty Mouth and the noses change, that's why. <laughs> uh, so I want to prevent that kind of thing as much as possible. And like, don't get me wrong, things are going to change naturally as you work on your comic. Because um, I mean, with Pretty Mouth, that example there, I I was learning how to make faces different. I just happened to have started a comic and that's how I was practicing art at the time. 
um, rather than sticking to just studies. Um, and that's fine. Like, you can start with a webcomic and learn as you go. It's a medium that really lends to that well, because um, most... I don't want to say most, but lots of other artists um, will do that as well. Like, you'll start a webcomic thinking you know what you're doing, and then you'll discover that you don't know what you're doing, because it forces you to, like, draw things you've never drawn before and really challenges you. Um, and readers tend to be used to it and okay with it. Um, it's kind of similar to how, if you ever read, like, a series of books or something, um, the writing and art will, like, improve with each book. Uh, it's very similar, but with webcomics, because there might be, like, pauses between pages, there might be a huge jump between a page rather than a whole book. So yeah, if you're starting a comic, or if you're, like, you're in the middle of your comic and, like, things are changing on you, don't worry about it too much. You can always go back and redo earlier pages if it's really bothering you, though I wouldn't wholly recommend that. Um, mostly because, like, you want to, if say like you take all your pages and you're going to print them in a book, you might want to take things and like fix them up so that they're nice for print or like a little more consistent. But you don't want to fall into the trap of like redoing your early pages over and over and over again. Um, because then you'll never get to the rest of your story and you'll stagnate a little bit, I think. Okay, don't get me wrong, there's merit to drawing the same thing over and over again, because every time you redraw it, you learn something new, but you still want to, like, move on to new stories and, like, learn how to finish a story. That's really important early on in your career so that you're not, like, um, you don't deliver something disappointing at the end of your book <laughs> or your series or whatever it is. Um, Bones and I learned that by, like, going as fast as we can uh, with our comics, like uh, Pretty Mouth. Um, we know that it probably should have been longer, but we were, we wanted, like, a really quick story that we could get out to, like, learn a whole bunch about, uh, to learn a whole bunch about comics and stuff. Um, so, like, the, the story structure in it wasn't the best, but, like, we learned a lot and it seemed pretty satisfying and, yeah. So don't be afraid to try things and, like, really focus on finishing things when you're starting out. Don't worry too much about, like having top quality when you start out. Because, like, quality will come with practice. Um, you'll get there, you know. Maybe start your first comic as, like, a really small thing and then work your way up. Because um, I'm only now, after, like, working on two completed comics and, like, starting two new series, like, I'm only just starting to get into, like, really watching for quality control and really focusing on cohesive character designs just because like there was so much other stuff I had to learn up until that point um so now I'm now I'm stepping back and like making sure the quality is there now that I've learned all the basics of like comics and storytelling um and that's okay I think <laughs> don't get me wrong if I could go back in time with like the skills that I have now I would have done my comics way differently um but Eh, what can you do? I'd rather just keep moving forward and keep improving rather than stressing about, like, ah, I have old work that looks weird. Like, eh, who cares? <laughs> um, another thing about people who like to read webcomics is they're very forgiving of, like, if they get to a comic and the, the later pages are, like, really high quality and really pretty looking, they don't mind reading through early pages that might be, like, lower quality or really sketchy or you know, whatever it is, because, like, that's just natural in webcomics, and you want to get to, like, the cool stuff that happens near the end. Um, so yeah, don't worry about starting out and being perfect, because it's not gonna happen. Note to self. <laughs> so as for, like, keeping quality control in mind, I'm very lucky that I work with a writer, um, because I know if I was doing this on my own, oh my god, there would be so many mistakes forever. Um, I honestly don't know if I could do this alone. Um, I know my schedule would be a lot more erratic because I'd only work when I, like, felt like it. Or having a partner, I kind of have to, like, match pace with them. Um, and, like, we push each other to, like, work hard and, like, keep going when we're down and, and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's also great to have a second pair of eyes to look at my work and be like, what is this, what is this crap you have drawn? <laughs> 
Um, Because I will try to slide a lot of, like, stupid, horribly drawn panels, like, past the bones. And he's like, no. (laughs) Um, At least I did in the early days. Um, I've gotten a lot better now where I'm, like, looking out for quality and, like, pushing myself to do really sweet pages. But when I was starting out, I was like, I just want to get these pages out. I just want to hit the deadline. I don't care if they're good. Um, So it's really great to have someone there who, like, is like, well, slow down. Let's make sure this is comprehensible. (laughs) Bone said, now it's the opposite. Because now I think I'm really focused on quality control. So Bones will be like, yeah, that looks good. And I'm like, no, no, I have to redo it. The composition's off slightly. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little anal about it now. But I used to be very free spirited. (laughs) Um... I think just as I've gotten better as an artist, I have an eye for, like, what actually works and what doesn't. So when I see myself sliding into, like, shortcuts or, um, you know, I've drawn something weird, I really want to redo it because now I have the knowledge to see that something's wrong. Whereas in the past, I'd be like, eh, it's good enough. It looks kind of like how I pictured it, even though, like, the composition would be off, things would be inconsistent. Um... Yeah, so eventually you'll get there, young young artist. <laughs> I guess, maybe. Bones is also great because he keeps all the character stuff straight. Because he does all the writing of our comics, so he handles all the scripts, all the character motivations, like um, their personalities, like what they wear and stuff. So it's great to like sit down and do character designs with him, and then throughout the comic he'll be like, why, why, why would she wear that? That doesn't make sense. Like... Things like that. Or he'll be like, you know, that expression doesn't work for Amanda. Like, she's a really, like, reserved, cool person. Like, she wouldn't use this big expression or this big, goofy expression. So I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. I'll fix this. Um, And he also keeps track of, like, like for Scourge of Nine Point, he's been keeping track of, like, um, oh, this character has this item with them. And this character is in this location right now because there's a big cast in it. So he's very good at, like, keeping track of, like, where all the characters are, uh, what they're like, what they wear. So it's it's really great to have someone else handle that because I know that I'm not good at holding all this stuff in my head at one time. Um, and admittedly, he's written out a really sweet list for me of all the character designs, the set designs, important items, and, like, locations and stuff. So that helps a lot. (laughs) Um, And I would highly recommend it if you're working on your own or if, you know, you're a writer working with an artist to just write out a list of, like, what's all the really, really important stuff that you need for your story so that you can design it ahead of time and you can prepare and keep track of things so that, like, important things don't disappear or, like, Um, you know, all your settings look different and unique and yeah. Yeah, like I said, if I was doing this on my own, it would be a mess. (laughs) Like, it would just be a lot of like, oh, this looks cool, I'll do this. Um, so yeah, great to have someone who keeps me in line. Um, so like, having a writer, I think it's great that I have someone who like, compliments my personality and my style of working. Um, because basically... There are places where, I don't want to say, like, weaknesses in, like, my my work, but, like, kind of, where, um, where Bones can, like, pick up the slack. So, for example, like, keeping all this character stuff in, in line and, like, um, uh, he's really good at, like, organization where I'm not so good and planning and stuff. Um, so it's really great to have someone who can handle all that so I can focus more of my effort on the stuff like I am good at and and interested in. So like, um, you know, drawing all the cute little characters out and I don't know, doing talking. (laughs) What am I good at? (laughs) Not talking, scratch that. (laughs) Um, but yeah, um, but there are like things that Bones isn't so good at and things I'm not so good at, and we kind of, like, fit each other. Like, where I'm slacking, Bones can pick that up, and vice versa. Um, So it's really great to have a creative partner who can do that for me. Um, I know I've heard of, like, other 
uh, creative duos or teams with a very similar sense. Um, and it works similar to that, like, at my day job, where I work in, like, a larger team where, you know, certain people are hired because they can do this, whereas I'm hired because I can do that. Um, and together we make, like, a really good team. Um, but in the world of comics, like, I know Kaiju, who does uh, a comic called Nove. Um, I know one of the one of the members there is like loves drawing like buildings and scenery and the other one really likes drawing the characters so they work out really well because then you have one person handling one thing they love in the comic and the other person's handling the other thing they love in the comic uh so it really balances out and you can get a lot more done that way i guess it works like any good relationship that isn't to say like in friendships and relationships that you need someone who like completes you um because they kind of do but you're also like strong people who can do it on your own because if bones was just off like writing novels or comics or whatever and i was off like drawing my own comics we'd probably do just fine um we're both like uh creative people and intelligent people and like we have a lot of practice doing what we do um and we're very hard working uh, but together, we're, like, even more powerful, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, so you really want to find someone who compliments you well um, and can match your, I guess, your, like, your work ethic and your speed and um, your personality and your passion. Because <laughs> um, you, it sucks working with someone who doesn't care about the project the same way you do. Um, it can be, like, a total drag to just work with someone who's, like, pessimistic about your project, where they're like, oh, it'll never go anywhere, or um, if, you know, they don't want to work on it, and you're like, no, we have to get it done, and, like, actually post it somewhere, and they're like, no, I'll get around to writing it one day. Like, that really sucks. It can hinder your work. Um, it makes you feel bad, because, like, if you have to nag someone to, to work for you, like, oh my god, that's such a drag. Um, you want someone who's just as excited as you are to get the work done and can deliver stuff in a manner that suits, like, your work schedule and suits theirs. Um, and you want to be able to pr provide that back to them. You don't want someone who's, like, leagues ahead of you and you're trailing behind to, like, keep up with them. You want, like, a nice balance where you work well together. <laughs> it's like those school projects, like, group projects, where you do all the work and then your group partners still get all the credit for like all the hard work you did. Um, yeah, you don't want to be in a work relationship like that because that sucks. <laughs> it It's hurtful. Um, it'll drive you crazy. Um, and it's not fair to like you or to them if only one of you is like doing all of the work. You know, the ideal partner will like help raise you up and you'll help raise them up and you'll have a good time. <laughs> I think I'm thinking a lot about like work partners. I mean part of it is like I'm thinking about like quality control and like character consistency. Um, but so Bones and I just went through a super crazy week getting ready for TCAF and I'm so relieved that it's like over because um, <laughs> there's a lot of like because I work a day job so I'm at I can't be home to, like, you know, help with packing and, like... Because, like, when I'm home, I have to work on, say, like, all the stuff we were getting ready for our Kickstarter and um, making sure that, like, our comic updates go out on time and doing a lot of, like, sit-down artwork. And so, like, Bones has been amazing with just, like, packing things and organizing things and, like, making sure we had everything that we needed for the Kickstarter and for TCAF. Um, so, yeah, I'm so grateful to him for being sweet and... <laughs> um, letting me sleep. <laughs> um, so yeah, get a creative partner that will uh, love you <laughs> and take care of you and you'll take care of them when they need it. Yeah, we also like to balance a lot of projects, so it's great to have two people to keep on top of things so you're not forgetting things or, like, putting things off. That's another big thing, is, like, juggling all the things is hard. <laughs> but yeah, because it, it really sucks when, like, people aren't pulling their weight in a team. But it's also great when you're working with, like, a super hard working team 
Um, Because you kind of motivate each other to, like, work really hard. Um, Because, like, for example, like, at my day job, for example, um, everyone there is, like, super hardworking and um, really competent at their work. Um, Same with Bones. Where, like, being surrounded by, like, people who are, like, so smart and so hardworking, it really makes me want to, like, work harder to, like, match pace with them. Um, And, like... I recently just went through, like, a bunch of stress uh, trying to, like, force myself to, like, keep up with people, even though it wasn't going to happen because, like, I was just stretched too thin and I'd taken on too much work. Um, But, like, yeah, I went through a little period where I was just, like, sad and stressed all the time and, like, I wasn't keeping up with my work. Um, And I felt really terrible. Like, I was letting my team down because I couldn't keep up with things and I didn't want to delegate work. Um, cause I was like, no, they're already swamped with work. I can't give them my work. I need to just like stay up all night and finish stuff. And like, it didn't work. I ended up crying on my boss and he was really nice, but, (laughs) and it worked out. And he basically sat me down and was like, you need to like delegate some of this stuff and like ask for help when you need it. Cause like, if you're so stressed out that you're like burning out, you're not going to be able to pull your weight on this team. But if you're, like, asking for help and, like, setting really good expectations for, like, how much work you can do and how much you can take on, then, like, the team can work around it, you know? Um, If it's, like, this deadline isn't going to be hit because there's just too much going on, then, like, you can move the deadline. Especially if you're a small creative team where you're, like, you're working at your own pace. You don't have to... You can move the deadline because you're in charge of the deadline. So, like, don't be afraid to ask for help from your partners or your team, and um, don't be afraid to, like, I guess set reasonable expectations, because, like, I know for me, I feel like I'm letting people down when I'm, like, they're, like, we need this thing at the end of this week, and I'm, like, well, it's going to take two weeks. Like, I really hate saying that to people, but I really need to say it more, because, like, I can only do so much, even when I'm working with people who can, like, pick up the slack. And it's so important to, like, set proper expectations so that you're not letting people down if you let them know what to expect. Yeah. So seek out teams and partners who want to help you succeed and want you to do really well and don't want to work you so hard that you burn out and cry and hate what you're working on. Um, If someone wants you to succeed, you're going to want them to succeed. And it's just, like, it's like a, a wonderful relationship where you're both helping each other like look for that in people because like the more people you're surrounded by who like want you to succeed and like work really hard it's gonna motivate you um because like if you're surrounded by people who like i don't know they want to they overwork themselves and you and they have really unreasonable expectations. You're not going to meet any of those expectations. You're going to be miserable. It's going to turn into hating the work you're doing and, like, your comic or whatever you're working on. And that's not good. You want to, like, keep your passion invigorated and love what you're working on. (sighs) So, yeah. That's my rant. That's, That's been my week, is just learning time management and, um, dealing with teams and partners and, like, figuring all that out. It's tough. Like, I, like, I hope what I'm talking about is helpful, but I'm still learning it, honestly. Um, I really need to work on, like, setting expectations, managing my time properly. It's tough. It's, it's a journey. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I hope that was an interesting rant. Guess I should talk about what I'm drawing. (laughs) Maybe. Um, so... Marble is... Did I mention it at the beginning of the video? I don't know. Marble... Did I? Okay. (laughs) Marble is the main character of Nine Point. He's a calico. Um, So if you don't don't know, calicos are tricolor cats. So they're usually like black, white, and orange. Though there are some variants like they could have like cream uh, fur or they could be a calibi, which is like tabby stripes. Um, uh, But... The interesting thing about calicos is they're predominantly female because the gene- oh god, I hope I don't get this wrong. So the genes that produce like the orange and non-orange fur are in the X chromosomes. So since like females have two X's, 
they can have one that says orange fur and one that says black fur, so then they get the tricolor. Um, and, like, another gene that says, like, white patches. Um, where males have the X and Y, um, which means they don't have, a, like, a second X saying, like, um, you know, black fur or something. Which means that they're, they can't really have tricolor fur. Um, but there are some mutations that allow male cats to have tricolors. Um, so usually they have, like, an XXY chromosome. Um, so marble is a rare male calico for reasons. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, looking at bones, like, did I get that right? Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a little sweetie. He's really shy. Um, he's about eight at the beginning of the comic. Yeah, he's about eight. Um, so I, like, while I was drawing him, like, at first I drew him, like, a little too young. Like, he looks maybe like a six-year-old in, like, the first drawing. So I'm trying to work at, like, making him look the proper age while still looking, like, really cute. It's tough. I tend to make my characters look like teenagers. Like, whether they're older, they tend to look, like, younger. And if they're really young, they tend to look older. Um, I think it just comes from, like, drawing anime where, like, most of the characters are, like, teenagers or, like, people in their 20s. So, like, everyone looks like just a young adult. Um, so I'm trying to make myself not do that and actually make the characters look their age. Um, Marble also has a raccoon mom who loves and supports him. So go find a creative partner that will love and support you like a sweet raccoon mom. That's the end. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Um, make sure to check out our Kickstarter if you're interested in the Magpie and horror comics. Um, we would love your support and give you sweet kisses. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe. We have lots more videos like this coming your way. Uh, Bones handles all the videos about writing comics. I handle all the videos about drawing comics. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!